Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you all here. We have six wonderful institutions that will each have six minutes to share a little bit more about what they do uh, within this 45-minute session. I do want to make sure that you know how to ask them questions, and the way that you can do that is through that Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. There is no need to save your questions until the end of the session. Feel free to send them at any point, even as other institutions are presenting via that Q&A. Your camera and microphone are off and they'll remain off throughout the session so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Really, really, really that Q&A is your best way to interact with our college representatives today. There is another hour of the college fair after this session concludes, so feel free to check out those sessions and sign up for more if you haven't already. And a reminder that this session is being recorded and that the recording will be available likely tomorrow at strivescan.com backslash SSD. Uh, but with that, we'll go ahead and kick things off with our first institution, which is Manor College. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Seth Carver. I'm from Manor College. Um, Manor College is a small residential private school uh, about 30 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia in the quaint town of Jenkintown. Uh, we were founded in 1947 by the Byzantine Ukrainian Sisters of St. Basil the Great. So we are a Catholic uh, associated college university. Um, we have an undergraduate enrollment about 700 and a very diverse campus, including many uh, international students. We do have one dorm on campus. Um, we're at 50% capacity right now due to COVID, but we hope to uh, um, introduce more students in the future. A couple of the great reasons to choose Manor is as a small school, we're able to offer a 12 to one class size. So you get to know your professors really well, which allows you to get great hands-on education. Um, and that's incredibly valuable, especially in our clinical-based programs, as well as many of our science programs. We have no lecture halls on campus. In fact, the biggest uh, lecture space we have is only 30 students and basically only one program uses it. Um, we also offer free tutoring for all students, as well as um, lots of office hours with all of our professors. Uh, and for the last five years, we've been voted the safest campus in Pennsylvania and the second safest in the entire United States. Our application process is incredibly easy. You just fill out uh, an online application at manor.edu slash apply. Uh, we just ask that you submit your official high school transcripts or any colleges you've attended if that's applicable. We are SAT and ACT optional and with the exception of a couple programs, we don't ask for any essays or letters or recommendation. We try to make it as easy as possible and we'll usually give you a decision within two weeks of the completion of your application. We have a wide variety of programs across business, education, um, the allied health uh, professions, as well as some one-offs in computer science, um, early childhood and criminal justice. Our biggest programs are our allied health uh, licensure programs. Um, we have uh, a two-year licensure associate in dental hygiene, uh, as well as a two-year licensure in expanded functions dental assisting. Both these programs are incredibly fantastic due to uh, the presence of our own dental clinic here on campus, which gives students a great um, hands-on education and direct patient contact without having to go out into the community for um, clinical exposures. These programs are very competitive, so they're generally only open to transfer students, but for high school students interested in those programs, we offer a preparatory program where you can come to Manor, take some classes, and then apply for one of those programs. We also have a veterinary technology program, which is similarly a two-year licensure program. Um, we also have a barn and many uh, different animals on campus that aid in all of our veterinary technology classes. Um, we have a, a vet clinic where locals will bring in their uh, pets for routine checkups. And this again gives our students great exposure um, to patient contact. A couple of our other valuable programs are our three plus three law program with Widener University. 
as well as our two plus two uh, nursing program with LaSalle University. Um, both of these programs, uh, you would start here at Manor, um, lay a great foundation for your introductory coursework, and then transfer to those larger institutions to achieve your uh, terminal degrees. So in the case of the law program, it would be a JD from Widener University. In the case of the nursing program, it would be a BSN from LaSalle. Um, one of the great advantages of that is that throughout the entire program, you will pay Manor costs which are significantly lower than the tuition at those institutions. Uh, our tuition is about eight to $9,000 per semester, which makes us the most affordable private residential college in Pennsylvania. Um, and that's all before financial aid and scholarships. Oh, I apologize. Um, all students who apply are automatically reviewed for merit-based scholarships. Um, currently, because we're SAT, ACT optional, we're only looking at your GPA. And if you qualify, we'll ask you to write a short essay. Um, and of course, if you do choose to uh, submit your standardized testing, we'll look at that as well. Um, but we generally give these out based on um, overall academic performance. And again, you don't have to do a separate application for them. You're automatically reviewed. We have a vibrant student life here on campus, um, including many different clubs and activities, um, including interest-based clubs like our music club, um, professional societies for our clinical programs in dental health and veterinary technology, as well as many other um, student life and student government organizations. Additionally, it's very easy to get involved with uh, student life if there's not a pro if there's not a club that you're interested in, you just need five students and a faculty sponsor um, to get that set up. It's very easy uh, and rewarding. We are we offer 12 uh, sports here on campus. We're part of the UCAA uh, division and we hope to achieve D3 status within a couple of years. Um, we do recruit for all of our athletic teams, but a large proportion of our students are walk-on tryouts, so it's very easy to get involved in athletics uh, if you're interested. Uh, on your screen, you can see contact for one of our counselors, um, as well as uh, you can scan the QR code in the corner to set up a visit with me or one of my colleagues. Uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing some of your questions in the comments. Wonderful, thank you so much, Seth, for sharing a little bit more about Manor College. Uh, from here, we will head on over to Muhlenberg College. Great, thanks so much. All right, hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Becca Larson. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Muhlenberg College, um, and I work with all students from um, pretty much mountain time and further west. Um, so um, feel free to, to reach out to me with any questions you have. Um, Muhlenberg is a small private liberal arts college located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown is about 60 miles from Philadelphia, 90 miles from New York City, and Allentown itself is the third largest city in PA. It's quite easy for students from a distance to get to campus as we're close to Newark Airport, um, Philadelphia Airport, and we do have our own airport right in Allentown, um, so we're pretty accessible. Allentown is situated within the Lehigh Valley, um, which has been rated as one of the, the kind of top five fastest growing areas for economic development in the U.S. So being a part of the Lehigh Valley, students are able to take advantage of a ton of opportunities, both within the city of Allentown and within the greater Lehigh Valley. And Muhlenberg is part of a consortium of schools within the Lehigh High Valley, so students have the opportunity to cross-register, participate in different activities, things like that with other schools within the Lehigh Valley. At Muhlenberg, we're a primarily residential college. 91% of students live on campus all four years with guaranteed housing. Um, we enroll just under 2,000 students, so we are quite small, and we're really known for the deep sense of community that we have at Muhlenberg. We've been called consistently the caring college over the years. Um, if you look behind me on my virtual background, you will see um, red doors, which is a, a common feature on campus. Every single exterior door on campus is red, which is a Lutheran sign of welcoming. So we're also known as a school um, where students hold doors open for one another. Um, another point of pride for us at Muhlenberg is the fact that we have delicious food on campus. We've been consistently ranked um, in the top 20 in the nation and certainly top 
um, in the US for, for best campus food. And we have delicious um, whoopie pies made in-house in the dining hall every single day, which is a bit of a Pennsylvania delicacy. Um, Athletically, we compete in um, the Division III um, conference, it's specifically in the Centennial Conference. Our football team made it to Final Four in Division III championships in 2019. And while our season was sadly canceled in 2020, we're just putting all of that energy um, into our 2021 season to hope that our team can go even further. Um, Academically, Muhlenberg offers a really wide range of um, academic offerings. As a liberal arts college, about a third of our students double major and another third pursue a major and a minor. So we're a great place for a student who has multiple areas of academic interest and wants the opportunity to pursue all of those interests. Um, we're known for our strength within the visual and performing arts. We have a spectacular theater program that does include a concentration in musical theater. Um, and our dance program offers modern ballet, tap, jazz, um, and aerial dance as well. So a lot of different dance forms. All of our productions um, are open to all students, including non-majors. So you can still be involved within theater, even if you choose not to study it um, as, a, as a major or anything like that. And our artistic programs do not require auditions for, for entry. Outside of our programs within the arts, we have a lot of strength within the sciences, a ton of opportunities for undergraduate research. Um, we have a lot of students who are pursuing a pre-health track or pre-med. And given the fact that healthcare is one of the largest industries within the Lehigh Valley, we have partnerships for both clinical and research opportunities at some of the local hospitals and an 87% um, admit rate into medical school within the US. So a lot of great pre-health advising and research opportunities for those pre-med students. Um, beyond the sciences, we offer majors and things like business, accounting, economics, finance, um, neuroscience, public health, our newest majors in sustainability studies. And we also have a spectacular political science program that houses the Muhlenberg Center for Public Opinion, which received an A plus rating by Nate Silver's 538. So there's a lot of really great um, and topical political research coming out of um, the polling center, especially in the past year and in election year, our students and staff are super busy and doing a lot of important research for um, the state of Pennsylvania. You don't have to declare, to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. Um, so lots of students come in undecided. That's our most popular major at Muhlenberg. Um, we do have several different academic partnerships that students can take advantage of. So we have most notably a three plus four program with the University of Pennsylvania College of Dentistry, a three plus four program with SUNY College of Optometry. Both of those programs require students to indicate an interest um, in those programs when they're applying for admission. Um, but for all of the other programs that you see listed here, um, you don't have to explain express interest in those programs until after you arrive on our campus. Our newest academic partnership is that three plus three program with Villanova University School of Law. And then we also have two early assurance programs for medical school with Temple University and Boston University School of Medicine respectively. So we really want to help students with those outcomes and ensuring that you're not only successful um, in receiving your bachelor's degree at Muhlenberg, but that we're supporting you with what's next. Our career center is also a great resource for this. Um, and as a lifelong service. So if 30 years down the road, you decide you want to make a career change, the Career Center is a great resource. And we really take advantage of our proximity to places like New York City, Philadelphia, and even Washington DC to get students connected with various industries and professionals so that they've really built strong networks um, so that by the time they graduate, they feel ready for what's next. Um, in terms of the admission process, we have been test optional since 1998. Um, so before most of you in the space were born today, we were already test optional. Um, we really value the opportunity to review applications holistically. So um, we love the opportunity to meet you through an interview. Demonstrated interest is something that we absolutely value um, throughout the admission process. So we really encourage you to find ways to connect with an admission officer um, to learn a little bit more. And in terms of financial aid, we only require the FAFSA and then we have a Muhlenberg financial aid form as well. So um, thanks so much for joining me. I'll pop my contact info into the chat um, and have a great day. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Becca, for sharing a little bit more about Muhlenberg. Before we pass things off to Penn State, I do want to make another quick plug for that Q&A. So if you have any questions about any of the institutions you've already heard from or about any of the ones you're about to hear from, don't forget that you can send your questions directly to the college representatives through that Q&A. Uh, but from here, we'll head on over to Penn State.
Thank you so much, Isabella. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining all of us and um, getting to know all of our wonderful different uh, institutions uh, this morning or this afternoon. Uh, my name is Isabel. I am an admissions counselor here at Penn State. I'm also an out-of-state recruiter working specifically with our West Coast students. So special hello to all of you from the West Coast, uh, particularly from California. But I am, uh, like I said, here to represent Penn State. We are a top-ranked academic institution, so we obviously obviously offer high quality academics here, but we also um, have a truly wonderful, vibrant student life on all of our campuses. And we're able to provide a lot of really unique opportunities for our students and all of those things combined uh, make all of us here so proud to say we are Penn State. So um, here is a slide with just some fast facts for you to give a nice overview of our institution. Uh, like I mentioned, we are a, a top 1% world class uh, ranked university. Um, so the kind of theme for, for our presentation is we're able to offer a lot of options and opportunities for our students because we are a large university. But as I'll show you in a couple of slides, we have a lot of different uh, varieties of options for our students as well. We are a research one institution, so we're able to allocate at least um, $900 million every year towards our undergraduate exp uh, research expenditures. And that means that we're able to offer um, undergraduate research opportunities for our students as early as freshman year. And those are for all of our students in all fields of study and all disciplines. Uh, we focus really heavily on our students' success, not just during their time at Penn State, but especially after graduation as well. Our highly ranked and award-winning career services centers offer a lot of resources for our students, whether it's mock interviews, help building, helping to be, uh, build your resume and your cover letters. Um, we also host the largest career fair east of the Mississippi twice a year, where we have really hundreds and hundreds of employers coming to our campus, uh, specifically to recruit Penn Staters for those internships, co-ops, and employment opportunities. Uh, we have over 275 academic programs, so a lot. Probably anything that you're interested in studying and pursuing as a career, we, we likely have a major for you. Um, we're most well known for our College of Business, College of Nursing, College of Science, and College of Engineering, but we have so much more than that. Obviously, we have information sciences and technology, uh, arts and architecture, education, veteran, uh, veterinary sciences, agricultural sciences, uh, earth and mineral sciences, uh, so a lot of options for you. Um, and we have over 1200 different clubs and activities. So obviously academics is gonna be your main focus in college, hopefully, uh, regardless of which institution you're attending. But we also know that we want your college experience to be so much more than that. Um, and we want them to be years where you truly grow, not just as scholars, but as people as well. So whether you're interested in joining students um, in Greek life, um, clubs that have to do with specific religious or sp uh, spiritual affiliations, cultural traditions, political affiliations, or um, uh, clubs, intramurals, uh, gardening club, cooking club, Netflix club, um, almost everything under the sun. We probably already have a group of students ready to have you join um, in their organization. And here in the middle, um, one of the things that makes Penn State so unique is the variety of campuses that we have. So. Before I go into that really quickly, in case you're from not the East Coast um, and you're not, not super familiar with where Pennsylvania is, here we are. Um, and from the center of the state, which is actually where our largest campus is located, uh, we're about three to four hours to New York City, Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Baltimore, some really wonderful East, East Coast cities over here. Now, here is a map of all of our 20 different campus locations. University Park is our quote unquote main campus. It's our largest campus at 46,000 undergraduate students. But please know that all 20 of Penn State locations are one university. We are truly one university. We're just geographically dispersed throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And what we're able to do because of that is offer 
options for our students. So um, like I said, University Park has 46,000 undergraduate students, but we have campuses that are as small as 500 students. If you're looking for that truly small, intimate campus feel. Um, and we have campuses that are located in a college town like State College here at University Park in more rural areas. We also have campuses close to our large cities of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, as you can see here. Um, and that being said, um, we also have this really unique program called our two plus two plan, which um, allows our students in almost any of our majors to be able to spend their first two years at Penn State at literally any campus, regardless of what your major is. And then your, for, for your final two years, your junior and senior year, you will automatically transition to the ending campus that offers your major. Um, so again, you can really customize, cater the first two years at Penn State, depending on the environment that you are that you are looking for, um, and then you'll automatically transition to your ending campus, whether that is University Park or any of our 19 other Commonwealth campuses. No matter which campus you start at or uh, graduate from, your diploma, your transcript will say the Pennsylvania State University. Again, we are one university. All right, very straightforward application process. Here, uh, we are test optional through 2023. We just require an online application and your self-reported academic record. These minutes go by so fast, so I'm gonna move on. But we are known to have the largest living alumni network in the world. So you have an opportunity to join a huge network of very successful Penn State alumni that are so excited to open doors for you. And here's our contact information. Here is my email address right here, ysarte at psu.edu, but you can also email our general admissions email address as well. Uh, looking forward to your questions as well after this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Isabel, for sharing a little bit more about Penn State. Uh, next, we'll head on over to the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Bryce Winter, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Pennsylvania College of Technology, which is located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is home to the Little, to the Little League World Series, if you've ever heard of that. Um, so really what we focus on here at Pennsylvania College of Technology is applied hands-on technology education. And we're actually the national leader in that. So before I really get into a little bit of the content of the presentation, I always love to share this video first because I think it really paints a good picture of what you could expect as a student here at Pennsylvania College of Technology. So we'll go ahead and we'll watch that and then I'll dive into the content of the presentation a little bit. Any college can make you look good on paper. At Penn College, we're more into looking good on steel. And looking good on x-rays, with looking good in code. With extra miles taken on airstrips and suspension bridges. Building and rebuilding. Vision and revisions. With perfect stitches and smiles. With making something that already looks good, look even better. We look amazing on a plane even if it's only for a minute. And when it's time to rest, we'll build a robot who can look good for us. And when it's all said and done and made and seen, you'll look good to everyone. Because the past might be written on paper, but the future will be made by hand. So just a little bit of some highlights here about Pennsylvania College of Technology. We have over 100 different diverse majors that all have some sort of hands-on component to it. Now, one of the big things that we're really proud of here at the college is that we have a 98% graduate placement rate. So our students, they're coming out with a great degree and they're able to get jobs in their industry right away, many times before they even uh, graduate, which is awesome. So I keep talking about this hands-on environment. So how in the world do we possibly do that? Well, we do it through our 150 plus learning labs here on campus. Every program has got some sort of lab component with most of our programs having multiple lab components to it. Now, I think one of the best things about Pennsylvania College of Technology is that we have an average class size of about 16 students. So you're really gonna get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with your faculty members and uh, other students in your classes as well. 
So I said we have over 100 academic programs here. So they're all split into three different academic colleges. So we have the College of Business, Arts, and Sciences. Some of the programs you'll find in there are graphic design, our business programs, human services, and restorative justice, uh, just to name a few for you. The second college that we have is our College of Engineering Technology. So this is our biggest academic school here at the college and we have over 65 different programs located in there. And that can range anywhere from construction to automotive to heavy equipment and diesel and anything really that has some sort of engineering component can be found uh, in that academic college. And then finally, we have our College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Uh, so some of the programs in that college are our PA program, our dental hygiene program, our nursing programs, just to name a few for you. And like I said, we have over 100 of them. So definitely check out our program finder tool on our website. It's going to allow you to see the programs we offer and even the classes you would take within each program. Now, one other nice thing, too, is that we have certificate programs, associate degree programs, bachelor's degree programs, as well as a couple master's degree programs as well. So student life, I recognize a lot of you are probably not uh, you know, familiar with Pennsylvania or this area. So we have a full-fledged college campus here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's got about 4,500 students, so a nice uh, smaller size school. Um, but we have, like I said, a beautiful, vibrant campus. It's get, everything's blooming right now, which is great. Um, but we have student clubs and organizations on campus. We competed at the D3 uh, athletic level here. Um, we have lots of internships students can get. If you really like the outdoor space, you'd fit right in here. Uh, we have lots of hiking trails and people will go right next to us here in the river. They'll kayak, they'll fish, they'll go on the walking trail next door. Um, but overall, our students, they, they just really like to be involved and they love to be leaders on campus. And, and we're very proud of them for doing that. So like I said, if you're unfamiliar with the Williamsport area, there's lots to do here. Um, one of my favorite things to do is you're right downtown here from the, uh, from the college campus. So we have the Community Arts Center, which is right downtown. It's actually where our commencement is held each year, but they also have Broadway shows there, concerts, comedians, and such. Um, we also have, like I said, the Little League World Series is right down the street from us. Every year, we typically bring them to campus. We'll have a picnic for them, kind of introduce them to the area and the school, and our students have a blast with that. We have tons of local restaurants and shops, which is really nice, but I think the best thing about the college is actually our location. Uh, we're actually, we're only a couple hours away from Pet or for, uh, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, New York City, uh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., which is awesome for you if you want to do like a day trip with your family or friends, or if, uh, you know, you're putting your name in the applicant pool. Not a lot of places can say they're, they're really that close to a lot of major metropolitan areas, so that can definitely be an advantage for you. We have tons of alumni success. We have an alumni network of over 60,000 people. So you can see we've had somebody that's won the Food Network show Chopped, somebody that's worked at Google, uh, Amazon. We've had somebody that works at John Deere, Tesla. Um, so a lot of big name companies, but also a lot of small name companies as well. You name it, we probably have an alum that's been there uh, or is currently there now. We do have our application. It's still open uh, through uh, July at this point. So it's very simple. You would just complete the app. You'd submit your materials. You'd meet placement requirements. If you're a junior looking to apply, our application will open up in August. Um, fortunately, we are offering on-campus visit opportunities. I recognize some of you may not get to Pennsylvania too much, but if you do, we have on-campus activities for you, as well as we do have countless virtual events as well. Thank you, everyone, and I will be here for questions. Great, thank you so much, Bryce, for sharing a little bit more about the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Next up, we have St. Francis University. Oops, yep, you're on mute. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly O'Hara with St. Francis Admissions. Um, so St. Francis was founded in 1847 by six Franciscan friars from Ireland. Um, so we're the oldest Catholic institution or in the um, one of the oldest Catholic institutions in the U.S. and the oldest Franciscan institution in the U.S. Um, so what I'd like to do here for you is to share my screen and be able to show you um, our president, Father Malachi Van Tassel, that you can see here. So Father Malachi Van Tassel took office in 2013 and his philosophy is for students to become the person who that they're meant to be. Um, so right now you may be involved with clubs or sports or activities that speak to who you are as a student. And I know that a lot of times it's 
challenging to figure out what should I major in or what meets my interests. And a lot of students are able to come in exploratory or undecided. And we can even help you self-design a major and still graduate with, um, you know, on time with the rest of your class. So that way you get exactly what you want, which I feel like makes you very marketable when you go out into the workforce. So our students um, embody the, those goals of Franciscan higher education that were set forth by um, two presidents prior to Father Malachi, but Father Christian Orovic. Humble and generous attitude towards learning. Our faculty are often doing research with students. So if you are a 2023 or 2022 student, you can actually get experience doing research and even a scholarship for a week-long program. So I'm happy to put in the chat some more information about that. Reverence for all life and goodness for all humanity and respect for the individual uh, persons. Um, everyone's welcome on campus. We're about 60% Catholic um, and about 20% come from Catholic high schools, but there's opportunities for all students on campus. A global vision speaks to our study abroad programs. We have a sister site in Ambiale, France. And students are able to spend a semester there pursuing any major and still graduate on time. Service to the poor and needy is embodied by our Dorothy Day Outreach Center. So if you're someone who really appreciates community service and also service learning, which is instead of doing for someone, you're doing with them. Um, on October 4th each year, around that date, we do a compressed class schedule and go out and serve in our local community, maybe doing some painting at the elementary school or helping with some cleanup projects. So, there's all sorts of ways that we're, you know, serving within our community. Um, the last three, a community of faith and prayer, some spirit of simplicity and joy in Franciscan presence. We have um, services on campus uh, daily. And then we also have a variety of different programs, including the Alta Via program, which is an intentionally Catholic community. So if you're interested in specific um, housing or just a way to deepen and grow in your faith, that's an opportunity that we want to support you through through college and they even do a, an additional trip to Italy um, and pilgrimage there that's covered through the school with being part of that program and there's a scholarship associated with it. And then Franciscan Presence, we have 13 friars on campus who are in a variety of capacities um, on campus with different um, opportunities through our, not only our campus ministry office, but teaching classes or even working with our Center for Events on campus. The whole tagline behind St. Francis of Become That Someone is um, embodied through Maurice Stokes and Jack Twyman. Maurice is the gentleman here with the glasses. Um, he was an alum uh, who graduated back in the 50s and went on to play for the NBA. And before we had concussion protocol management and NBA player salaries the way they are uh, today, he had fallen and hit his head on the hardwood and his uh, former teammate, uh, Jack Twyman, actually ended up adopting him because he was paralyzed um, basically from his nose down. He would have to um, endure several hours of grueling physical therapy, and he saw that his teammate's family did not have the resources to be able to help him, and so he wanted to help fundraise for his medical bills and help advocate for him. So it was a, a partnership that lasted the rest of their life, and the NBA Sportsmanship Award that was established in 2013 is named after uh, Marie Stokes and Jack Twyman. So you get to be part of NBA history too, as you become that someone you're meant to be, to be able to go out and serve the world um, in the capacity that you're meant to do as well. Just a few quick facts about St. Francis. Um, we're rural and private, about 60% female. We do have a variety of unique programs such as our um, bachelor's and uh, master's level degrees. So we do have a social work program. We have aquarium and zoo science. Education is a very popular major on campus. We have a master's program that is direct entry, meaning you don't have to reapply for occupational therapy or physical therapy or physician assistant. And then the physical therapy program actually goes on to a, a doctoral program. Um, small class sizes, we have about 18 students per class, even pre-COVID. And then uh, placement rate for graduation, there's 96% uh, of our students are employed six months after graduation, and then it jumps up to about 99% after nine months. And then we do have a variety of different athletic teams on campus. So it's not uncommon for our students to 
be part of an athletic team as well as do their clinicals and still graduate on time too. And then there's 80 different clubs and organizations. And if you want to create something, um, you're able to do that and even get funding from the school for it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. We have uh, three different schools on campus as well as online programs. So I'll include that information in the chat as well for you. Great, thank you so much, Kelly, for sharing a little bit more about St. Francis University. Uh, before we head over to our final institution of the session, I do want to make another quick plug for that Q&A. So if you have any questions about the five institutions you've already heard from or about Villanova, who you're about to hear from, don't forget about the ability to use that Q&A feature. Uh, but from here, we'll head on over to Villanova University. Thank you, Isabella. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daly Simpson. I am representing Villanova University today. I'm so excited to talk to you all here. So let me just share my screen and we will dive in. Here we go. All right. Okay, so um, we'll kind of start right at the beginning. So for those of you who are not familiar yet with Villanova, um, really quickly, we are a four-year private Catholic Augustinian liberal arts institution located just outside of the city of Philadelphia. So campus itself, this is kind of a quick uh, aerial shot here, um, sits on about 260 acres. So uh, to kind of help allow you to visualize that better, uh, from corner to corner, it's about a 15 to 20 minute walk. Um, so the campus itself um, is kind of a, in a suburban setting. You have lush greenery and open spaces and that kind of collegiate um, Gothic architecture. So all of that's kind of right there in Villanova, Pennsylvania. Um, but at the same time, um, our students do definitely utilize our proximity to the city. Um, it's a little hard to tell in this shot, but we do have two train lines that run adjacent to campus with three on-campus train stops. So it's super easy for students to jump right on the train um, in about 20 minutes or so you'll be in downtown Philadelphia which is the sixth largest city in the country uh, so for those of you that are from you know far away out of state um, it's also really easy to kind of come and go from campus because that train line runs directly to the airport um, as well as the Amtrak station in the city um, so students might utilize the city for just fun recreational things a nice way to blow off steam with friends maybe you go to a museum or or um, a nice dinner out or a professional sporting event. So all of that is really uh, is easy to do. Uh, we are mid-size, so we um, have about 6,500 undergraduate students that live on campus. Um, the vast majority of those students do live on campus. Um, we can't quite guarantee that four-year uh, guarantee for campus housing, although we do get really close. Uh, so we guarantee three years of housing, um, and we have the physical capacity to house about 85% of our seniors um, should they choose to uh, stay on campus. So that's a really brief overview of what the physical campus looks like. Uh, again, to just sort of further orient you to our location in the small town of Villanova, Pennsylvania. Again, um, 12 miles outside of Philadelphia, uh, but New York City is about a two hour drive to our north, um, an even quicker train ride. Uh, and then you'll see, you know, Baltimore, uh, Washington, DC, all of that's about three hours to our south. So in terms of the university itself, um, so we do offer over 80 different majors and minors from which students can choose. Those programs are housed amongst four undergraduate colleges. So our largest of the four is our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. As I mentioned at the beginning, we were historically founded as a liberal arts institution. So even today, uh, if a student's studying maybe something in STEM, um, we do have a core curriculum where all of our students will be exposed to some of those liberal arts mainstays, um, making sure you can think critically and write well and, and all of those uh, sort of skills. Uh, so our largest, again, is the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We offer the Villanova School of Business, the College of Engineering, and the College of Nursing. So again, you know, that 80 or so uh, is a pretty wide spectrum. It's, it's essentially, you know, most of the things that you can uh, imagine. Um, we are also a top producer of Fulbright Scholars, which is pretty exciting. Uh, for those of you who are not quite familiar with that program, uh, it's a really prestigious scholarship program um, for recent graduates. Uh, so after they leave us at Villanova, uh, they will get grant funding to go conduct research internationally um, or maybe teach English internationally. So a uh, pretty cool accolade. 
Um, and then uh, just kind of really basic uh, information in terms of class structure. Um, so our average class size is 23 students. Um, so we don't have any of those enormous lecture halls with, you know, three, 400 students where it may be easy for you to get lost. Uh, so that's definitely not the case here. You, you will not feel just like, uh, you know, another face in the crowd or a number. Um, our faculty will certainly get to know you very well and vice versa. You'll also get to know your peers very well. Um, so for students who are interested in experiential learning, so things like internships and research and study abroad, all of those um, opportunities are available to all of our students. Um, I do like to emphasize, I know that uh, I think as humans, we tend to really associate internships with maybe business or engineering um, or research with just the sciences. Um, that's definitely not the case. So all of our students will have a lot of um, support in finding internships, uh, externships, uh, and all of those kinds of opportunities. All right. Um, so having covered academics, albeit briefly, uh, we'll move along to uh, kind of what you can expect on the social front. So as I mentioned, we are predominantly a residential campus. So all of our students live, you know, within like a 15 minute walk of each other. Um, so there's always something going on on campus, whether it's um, like a, you know, a weekday afternoon after classes end uh, or on the weekends when you have a little bit more free time. So we do offer over 260 different clubs and organizations. Uh, it's essentially everything that you can think of. So anything that you're really involved with now in high school that you'd like to continue, uh, you will likely be able to do so. So the uh, kind of categorical uh, breakdown here would be everything from athletics. So we do have 23 division one programs. We have club level sports and intramurals, performing arts. So dance and theater and uh, jazz bands, that sort of thing. Um, all different kinds of multicultural organizations and identity, identity affirming spaces. Um, Greek life, uh, professional organizations, all of that kind of stuff. So really no reason um, to be bored. Um, and then just to sort of wrap up here, thinking about outcomes. So you know that um, a college education uh, is expensive. It's expensive literally, you know, uh, with finances, but also with your time. So you really want to know that you're going to get something out of all this hard work. Um, so I think it's really, really great to sort of emphasize the, the back end uh, statistics here. Um, so in an ordinary non-pandemic year, 97% of our students uh, have found full-time employment or enrolled in a graduate program within six months of graduation. I think 92% for a class of 2020 is still pretty darn high, um, is really a testament to um, how hardworking and ambitious our students are. Um, and then just to close here, um, this is the admission information when it is your turn to apply come your senior year of high school. All of this is information is certainly on our website, but there are four different ways to apply to Villanova, including early action, early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. Um, so I think that's just about all the time that I have. So thank you all for tuning in today, and I'm happy to field any questions through that Q&A feature. So thanks again. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Daly, for sharing a little bit more about Villanova. At this point, we have a few more moments left in our session. So what I will do is go ahead and invite all of our college representatives to return on camera once again, and we will ask them all a quick question, a quick lightning round before we wrap up today's session. Uh, so I think it'd be really great if everyone could take a spare moment to share what your favorite tradition or event held on your campus is. Uh, we can go ahead and have you go in the same order you presented. So we'll kick things off with Manor. So I'm actually going to ask my colleague, uh, Zach Metz, to share. He's a recent grad of Manor College. Thanks so much, Seth. Um, probably one of my favorite things here at campus that I really enjoyed was orientation. Um, you definitely connect with the faculty and the students and, you know, you realize about why you do belong here at campus and probably has to be one of my favorite events to see everyone enjoying their time here at campus and learning more about the programs and the clubs that everyone can join. And it's just a great time. 
Um, at Muhlenberg, I'd say my favorite tradition, um, both are, it's kind of two traditions that happen around finals. Um, and that's our midnight breakfast where we open the dining hall late and serve um, a bunch of, of late night snacks for our students. Um, but what makes it even more fun is that our faculty and staff are the ones who are serving the students. So they just get to feel supported and enjoy a little bit of fun during an otherwise stressful time. And um, in partnership with that, we also do a scream in the library. So in the middle of finals, as everyone's feeling really stressed and just needs a little bit of a stress relief um there's a specific time that we send out and everyone just kind of you know goes wild for two minutes and then gets back to to studying so those are two fun things we do at Muhlenberg. Awesome. And at Penn State, I would definitely have to say our fav my favorite event is THON. It's short for Dance Marathon. Um, and it is the largest student run philanthropy in the world. Very proud of that. It's something our students are really passionate about joining and being involved in. And it's all a year round uh, fundraising effort to raise money against uh, pediatric cancer. Um, and it culminates in a 46 hour nonstop dance marathon with live music, lots of fun. This past year, our students raised over $10 million towards that cause. We're very proud of that. At Pennsylvania College of Technology, I think my favorite is by far every parent and homecoming weekend. We actually do this big bonfire. So all alumni come back, current students, parents, family, friend, they can all do that. So it's a pretty cool little affair to see here on campus. For St. Francis, I would say it's donut heaven during finals week. So there's donuts every night. And then they also have other late night snacks and students get really excited about it. And then our alumni and our faculty also get to serve students. So it's a, a good way to cap off the end of a, a stressful semester. We also have our snow tubing hill on campus that uh, students like to enjoy during the, uh, the winter months. I'd say my favorite tradition at Villanova is um, kind of similar to Isabel at Penn State. So we are really proud of our partnership with the Special Olympics organization. Um, so we run this event um, called the Special Olympics Fall Festival. Um, it's the, the world's largest student run Special Olympics event. Um, so it kind of transforms campus uh, for the weekend and will invite um, student athletes and their families from all corners of Pennsylvania. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for taking the extra moment to share a little bit more about that event or tradition. Uh, I definitely learned a little bit myself as well. I wasn't expecting to learn more about a group screen. That's super fun. Uh, but I do want to take an extra moment to give a big thank you to all of our college representatives for sharing a little bit more about their institution. And also a huge thank you to all of you for joining as well. I do want to note that there will be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your screen after this session concludes. If you don't mind taking the extra moment to fill that out, it's super helpful for us as we continue to plan events such as these moving forward. A reminder that there's another hour of programming after this session wraps up, so feel free to check out both sessions if you haven't already. And a reminder that this session was recorded, so if you need to return to any of this information, it will be available tomorrow at strivescan.com backslash SSDA. Uh, so thank you once again for joining. Thank you once again to our college representatives, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful rest of their day.